God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to you. Hallelujah, salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty. Yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God he is wonderful. <sighs> Good morning, Brian. Good morning. Good morning. Now, I intended to come up here. First of all, get some tears out of my eyes. I intended to come up here and I was prepared to do Joshua. I was 24, because I wanted to do, you know, Joshua's final speech to the Israelites as he was leaving. I wanted to be able to, you know, bring forth this big word about, you know, me and my house will serve the Lord. And I was ready. I was like, yeah, this is going to be nice. So as a, you know, good student, I went back and said, let me start by rereading the beginning chapters of Joshua just to make sure that, you know, I'm getting everything right. I'm, I'm, I'm in the context of what Joshua meant by his desire to serve the Lord and the importance of it. But when I got there, I got stuck because I read the first six verses, which Dina read for you this morning, and I couldn't get past what the Lord was trying to say. I couldn't get past the proclamation that he was giving. I couldn't get past really what God was preparing this older gentleman for. And I think I couldn't get past it because I, I, I felt very much like Joshua and I were walking in some similar paths. So before I really get truly started, let me say um, this morning's message is entitled Be Encouraged. God is doing a great work. Be encouraged. God is doing a great work. Valley Brook, we find ourselves at an interesting crossroad. On this day, this will be what my final my final time standing in front of you. Who knows? Might do something virtually. Might come back later on. Who knows? We'll see what's going on. But right now, this is my final time standing in front of you and. When I started to read Joshua, that first thing came to mind of is I wonder how he felt. Kind of standing there, listening to God talk to him about where he was and what he was about to do. He was standing basically on the other side of the Jordan and on the other side was this great land that had been promised to his forefathers that well, had been promised to initially him and his, his, his group of generation and then taken away from his group of generation because of things that were going on and, and how they transgressed against God. And he was now, he and Caleb were now the two lone people waiting to fulfill that promise, to, to, to touch the land, to actually cross this Jordan and to stick his hand into the dirt of the land that had been promised to him and had been promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The land that they had been taken out of Egypt into to go in and take over. The land that Moses got to see the entirety of but never got to touch. 
So here he was, this 80-year-old man, preparing to take this nation into battle to possess the land that they had been given. Valley Brook, I, I, I'll start off with the youth. Youth, each year is like that for you. Each day is like that for you. Each time that you wake up, you are standing on the, this side of the Jordan waiting for God to pat, open up the water so that you can walk through into a new land that God has, has given you. Into a new opportunity that God has given you to touch those that are around you. Into a new opportunity for you to use all the greatness that God has given to you. To Valley Brook, to the older generation, each day that you wake up is a new day for you to cross the Jordan into a new challenge that God has given you. Into a new thing, into a new thing for God to take over for you. Into a new place for you to walk into so that God sees, so that the world sees how much that God has blessed and given you. But with each one of those first steps, there comes trepidation. I think I got stuck because I was feeling that trepidation. I got stuck because, you know, I'm, 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 I'm daddy. I'm husband. I'm elder Bobby. And there are expectations that come along with that. They're, you know, that's, you know, want to look at him and hope that he's being strong. You know, he's got some people back here that he's got to make sure, you know, are, are, are taken care of. He's got some people that he has to make sure, see that, you know, the work of God is going on in him so that we can stand there and put our strength in there and knowing how they're keeping them steadfast and held up. And the pressure was kind of <laughs> weighing on a bro. <laughs> so when I read the scripture, it helped me to see a little bit about where it was that I was putting my own stuff. The roles that I was now taking on versus the roles that I was allowing God. Well, shoot, I'm allowing God. The role that God has that I should be following behind. The scripture says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm a, I am about to give them to the Israelites. First off, know that God gives us the land. God sets out the boundaries. God has already orchestrated where it is that we're going to be going. I, I, I happen to come across a scripture in Philippians 2, 13, for it is God who works in you to will and act in order to fulfill his good purpose. The land that we have been given possession of, God has already scouted out. God has already, he already knows where the further places are. He already knows where the rocky places are. He knows where the missteps could be. He knows where the enemies are hiding. He knows where the, where the vantage points are to attack. He knows where the places to sit back and rest. God has already gone into that land. He's already whispered into the ears of your enemy. You know they're coming. He's already whispered into the ears of those that have power to say, you know, favor needs to be set upon this one. When they come into your presence, make sure that you take special heed of them. Every place that you go, God has already gone before. Every place that you are, God is. And every place that you left behind, God already knew about. Young people, 
Don't feel like as you're going into the rest of this day, the rest of this life, the rest of this journey, that you are ever alone. It is such a misconception that there are self-made anything. You are not even self-made. God has made you. God has formed you. And he is working. He is willing in you. In order to fulfill the good purpose he has for you. So there's no need for you to feel like you got to do it all on your own. We have nothing to do on our own. Verse 3 says, I will give you every place where you set your foot. As I promised Moses. I loved when I read this because it, it's. This statement is a statement of power. It, 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 excuse me. It's a statement of faith. Because what he's saying here is it kind of goes right back to, to the spies. But specifically, if you look at Caleb, and there's, there's a mention later on in Joshua about Caleb and, and the land that he requested. And it was all based upon the places where he walked. The places where he set his feet. You see, in the exploring of the land that God has given you, he's saying, hey, I'm giving you full reign. I want you to go as far as you think you can go. And the extent in which we travel goes according to our faith and what we have in his power. If it's just a little bit, we might only take about three steps. If it's a little bit more, we might take five. My, I encourage you to take as many steps as possible. Touch as much of that land as you can. You see something over there you like, run on over and put your foot in. If you see something over there, put your foot in. Touch all of the land. Recently, we, 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 we lost a, a great Howard brother, Chadwick Bozeman, to the king. And one of the things that I've learned about this young brother was that he was willing to just do what it is that God has given him. His first play was written because he was mourning the loss of, of a friend that had been shot. He gave up a role on assault just so that he could, you know, because he didn't like how they were being portrayed and he wanted to portray more positive people. So he ventured in and played all of these great men, these great black men that, uh, that, that he had known about in, in, in history. And, and, and it ended up becoming, you know, really the image of how people saw him. He didn't see, he didn't think it to be small of him to venture into those roads. He decided, you know what, that's a place that I want to go, so I'm going to step out into it. Have the faith to step out into whatever God has shown you. If he has opened it up, he's given you a picture of what life can be, don't be afraid to step out to the farthest ends of what he's given you. Walk the entire breath. Stump on every piece of ground. Trample over some rose bushes if you got to. Be careful of the thorns. Because God has promised to give you everything that he has set his foot on. You, you have set your foot on. Now understand I am not saying that this is always going to be a pleasant time. And it's always going to be a happy time. That it's not going to have its struggles. Because it is. It's all right. It's going to be times where it's sad. It's going to be times where it's happy. It's going to be times where it's, where it's, you just sit back going, really? All of this? Hello, 2020. But even in those struggles, know that God has already promised you. And because you rest on his promises.
Verse 4 says, your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. For me, I've always found that there are two types of people. I am definitely one of, one of these types and I'm trying to be the other. The first type of per person I call a God helper. A God helper is more like a, a, a Chan, uh, who was one of the, the, uh, the leaders, one of the fighters um, of Israel. After they defeated Jericho, Achan decided, you know, well, they had been told not to take any of the devoted things. And Achan, you know, saw some pretty little gold trinkets here, a little God thing there. It's like, you know, well, I'll put everything else, but you know, they're going to miss a couple. You know, let me just take that back and put that, take that back to, the, to my camp. You know, that's, that's all right. See, he was one of those God helpers. Let me explain what a God helper is. A God helper is, tends to be that person that walks with God as far as they can, and then they get to a point to where it says, I think God has done enough, and it's now it's time for me to help him out so we can get the rest of the way. You know, I, they, they're a little impatient bunch. Because... They, they, they go so far, it's like, you know, we're going at a good pace, but it don't seem fast enough. During this process of getting prepared to leave, you know, we, we've had to do a whole lot of stuff. You know, there's, there's house cleaning, there's moving, there, you know, there's, there's, you know, you're looking for, uh, we were looking for a new house and everything. And, you know, there's financial stuff. And, you know, I had just all kind of stuff going through my mind. And, you know, I sometimes get on my little spiritual chair there and I sit back and go, you know, I, I, I see that God is going to give us what we need, but maybe I can just help out a little bit. You know, if we if we compromise a little bit on this side, you know, maybe we can make this happen a little bit better, you know. So there was this one particular house that we had been looking at and. You know, it, 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 it needed some work. Um, it needed a lot of work. But I'm like, you know, I, I see the trend of what you're doing, God. You know, the prices were coming down. You know, location looked like we were going to be in the right location that we wanted to be in. And I was like, well, you know, if we take this house, and, you know, it's okay a little bit. The price is okay. But if we take this house and we do a little bit here, a little bit here. You know, maybe it'll be exactly what we want. And, you know, I, I'm sure God will be happy with it. Sure enough, that house got bought. And I'm like, but I thought I was helping. <laughs> and I could kind of see God was like, I don't need no help. I got this. Wait for me. You see, with God helpers, we sometimes get a little bit ahead of God's blessings. God helpers tend to look at things pretty much within their own strength. And when their strength starts to get a little bit low, they figure, well, I, I, I got to help God out because, you know, we, pro we can't possibly accomplish what needs to be accomplished because... I don't have enough to make it to the other end. But the measure of what's to be done was never being measured by your strength ever at all. The measure of what God had given was done by his strength. 
If you continue to read just this, just this scripture all the way through six, you will see that God says I seven times. Number of completion. Maybe. Ooh. That in order for you to get what God had defined, it was going to take his full strength. And that if you continue to find, to not find, but to embrace his strength and allow for him to use you and as, as he seems fit, then what he promised was going to be fulfilled. See, those, those are the attributes of that second person. I couldn't come up with a good name for him, so I called him God Doers. But God Doers, God Users, God Tools, they are the ones that basically sit back and wait and say, all right, Lord, whenever you want to use me, use me. And however you want to use me, use me. If the only thing you want to do is use me like a little Phillips screwdriver and turn me three times, I'm happy with the use. Because I know that as soon as you're done, the adjustment that has been made has been perfect. God doers recognize that they are tools to be used by God, partners with God, and recipients of God. They agree to be in partnership with Christ. What made Joshua such a powerful leader was the fact that he agreed to be in partnership with God. He knew from his sojourning throughout the land that this was going to be a fight. He knew that it was going to be big. And he knew that he wasn't doing it alone. He knew that what was going to be given was going to be prosperous. He knew it was going to be bountiful. That's the word I was looking for. It was going to be bountiful. He knew that it was going to come with some struggles. But he also knew that as long as he didn't depend just upon himself, not his own talents, not his own abilities, not his degree, not his, his girth, not his intelligence, as long as he didn't just depend on him, that this was going to be fulfilled in him. Love people, you're not in this alone. You're not in this alone. You're in partnership with Christ. And that takes me to Philippians 1, 6. It says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ Jesus. And it works very well with the sixth verse of be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Starting off with the good works, it says being com confident of this very thing. What is the very thing that they were being confident of? They were being confident of their partnership in Christ. So, if I have any last instructions, I'll start off with that. Be confident of your, of, your confident, of your partnership in Christ. Confidence means the feeling of belief that one can rely on someone or something. So if you're feeling your confidence wane, check what you're relying on. If you're relying simply on yourself, check.
change. Insert God. Take out self. Insert God. Because see, confidence grows if the thing that we're relying on has proven to us that it that that it's powerful, that it that it has strength, that it has that it has foundation, that it has steadiness, that it has that it has a a, a, a solid foundation to allow us to move forward. It's kind of hard to be confident when we don't think that we just got enough to get it there. But when that confidence is is based upon God. When the firm trust is based upon who God is in us and what he can do through us, then our confidence can abound. Two, know that God has selected you for his journey and be prepared to see it through. Just like Joshua and Caleb knew that they had been selected to go throughout the land and to to, to, to spy the land and to see what it is that it possessed, not to judge whether or not they could possess it. They knew their job. So I want you to go in knowing what your job is and knowing that you have been selected for that job to do exactly what it is, friend, that God has given you to do. Don't go into the kitchen with a chef's hat on and a chef's jacket, knives in both hands, and try to fix the refrigerator? That's not your job. Don't go onto the football field carrying a golf club. I think you got something wrong. Which means don't try to go into any environment being anything other than who you are. Because God has made you especially for this time. He has given you the things in your life, the strengths that you have, the abilities that you have, and the personality that you have for the, perfect, for the task that he has for you. So embrace. Embrace that he knows what he was doing. Embrace how he has fashioned you. Because there is no one greater. Third thing is God is with you until the end. You are never alone. The good works that God has given you to perform. First of all, he is performing it in us. And he's not going to stop until it is so that means he's always going to be with you so whenever Satan is in the back of your, your head trying to go oh, you're all alone nobody else is around you can't feel him he's not there that old familiar feeling of God embracing you you don't have it you don't hear that familiar voice anymore do you <laughs> Know that God never leaves us. And he has promised that he's going to be there until the end. Until the day of Jesus Christ. He is going to be there until your end. So you are never alone. I've told you once before that if at ever a point you have, you don't feel him. That doesn't mean he's not there. That means he's, he's got you even more. That he's surrounding you even more. That this is the area he wants you to look at and say, wow, look at where God is bringing me out of. He wants you to take joy. He wants you to, he wants you to rejoice. He wants you to know that, hey, I know that this is the place where the glory of God is going to make manifest in my life. This life that God has given you is a precious one. And it is one that he has all that he has fashioned you to complete. 
Your victory over that problem is coming. But all he asks you to do is be strong and courageous. So as we leave this place, I entreat you to be strong and courageous. Strong, possessing the skills and qualities that create a likelihood of success. Courageous, mental or moral strength to venture, persevere, and withstand danger, fear, difficulty, doubt, uncertainty, or just ourselves. We are at a crossroads, Valley Road. And though you go one way and I go the other, be strong and courageous. Know that's what's coming around that bend is another opportunity for you to take. And that land is rich and flowing, waiting for you to take it over. Because also know that what's coming around this bend, I'm ready for. Yeah, I got some nervousness. The handshake's a little bit. But I'm confident not in myself. I'm confident in what God has given me. And I'm confident in what you have given me. Which is plenty of love and plenty of courage to know that God is always with me. And that if ever I'm feeling alone, I know I got a bunch of brothers and sisters to call. And most of all, my God is always there. So God bless you. I love you. And as we leave, I pray that God will continue to bless you. Um, don't close your browsers at the end of this because there is a song presented by Miss Dina talking about how Jesus will. I love you, Valley Brook. God bless you. Amen.